I have seen the final scene of the movie. You will, your jaw will be on the floor at how exciting it is. Like, I was. Yeah. I was there seeing it. Pretty exciting. That's so good to know. Welcome, welcome, everybody in here and out there, Cybertronians of all ages, to Teletran Creativerse. I'm your host, Alfonso Peterman. We have officially broken into peak marketing season for Transformers Rise of the Beasts, with an explosive new theatrical trailer blowing the socks off of fans all across the globe, and crispy new character posters presenting our favorite bots in all of their glory and statues of our favorite bots touring the world and capturing the eyes of everyone, combined with the influx of new action figures being stocked worldwide for fans of all ages. Rise of the Beasts is the moment. Well, my guest tonight is no stranger to the Transformers franchise. He's a known and admired Transformers voice actor with several years of experience and talent for numerous Transformers projects, from Shockwave and Transformers Prime, my favorite show, to Blitzwing and Bumblebee, to Death Charge and Teletran 1 in Beast Wars. And now, he is officially debuting two ferocious bots for the first time on the big screen as Terracon Battle Trap and Maximal Rhinox. In Transformers Rise of the Beasts, it is my high honor to welcome for the first time the iconic David Sobolov. David, welcome to Creativerse. Ooh, hello, thanks for having me. Yes, of course. Thank you for being here. It what what a trailer, man. That was wild. That was wild. Wow. Um boy, the technology has improved, hasn't it? It has. It has. You can definitely see the difference. And it's, I, I was thinking about that when I was watching it. I was like, you know, back in like, uh, you know, the early Bay film era, you can definitely see that it, it was really ahead of its time, but you can tell the technology that they use were a little bit different. Whereas now it's like, it's very clean, very smooth. The main thing for me is they transform with such complexity now. And they never used to do that. Yes. They, I don't know what it's like slowed down. If you were playing with a toy, probably every single moment, every single movement of that toy would be represented in the CGI now when they transform. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's 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 incredible the way that it came out and especially in this trailer. Um, well, anyway, thank you for being here um, and being willing to chat with us tonight. And as a huge personal fan of projects like Transformers Prime and Bumblebee, it is incredible to have gotten to meet you and, you know, even, you know, spend some time talking at TFCon LA this year. Um, how have you been doing since concluding your contribution on Rise of the Beast? And how are you feeling about, about the marketing so far? Um, they are really ramping up now. Uh, it was a great thrill to be on the movie. I did more sessions than any uh, movie I've ever done, um, especially for Transformers. Uh, we had a lot of real complex work. We wanted to make sure everything was perfect and wonderful for you guys. And I was scheduled to go in today, which is now about four days before they have to deliver the movie, we were maybe going to do some final tweaks, but they decided they were happy and it's all done now. Wow. That's awesome. Well, I can see why they've arrived at that conclusion because it was a, it was an awesome trailer for sure. Yeah. I mean, the marketing has kind of, you know, had some slower moments, but I think, and I kind of feel like starting now, you know, the entire month of May will be the month of marketing. We're going to really ramp up until the final release. Yeah, I didn't get to see the Terracon um, posters today, but they did so many things today. Yes. There's a lot going on today. Yeah, the, the trailer. Yes. Yesterday, the Rhinox uh, poster came out. That was fun. Yeah, I got to see that. And then I I, I really like his design. And I, we did get uh, Scourge today, uh, which was the only one that they released. But I can't wait for Battle Trap. I can't wait for Nightbird. That's the one I really want to see. We haven't seen much of her in terms of the design. So that's exciting. Battle Trap has... Um, 
all the grit and brutality that you're looking for. <laughs> Very good. He's pretty exciting. There's a lot going on in those scenes. Yeah, and I'm 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 talking to him right now, which is incredible. Um, now I just want to say, you know, traditionally you're known for like delivering very strong and deeply aggressive characters due to the vocal strengths and talents that you have. Is is that ability? And we've kind of talked about this at TFCon, but for the audience, is that ability something that you trained to develop, or was this a natural gift that you turned into a career? Well, I was blessed with a super deep voice, but that was it. You know, like my dad. Uh, I had to learn how to act and I've had 30 years of experience and it does help to have some life experience with these characters. And I always try to infuse something personal in the story of the character, even if it isn't in the script, just to give him more juice, you know? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And you, you've definitely, you know, you've been around the block within the Transformers franchise <laughs> and you've definitely made a reputable name for yourself with such incredible and powerful performances in past projects. Um, how does working on Rise of the Beast stand out, if at all, from doing past Transformers voice roles? Um, what about doing this movie stood out for you? Um, Steven took a lot of care. It was wonderful, again, working with the director of the picture. Uh, quite often when you do live action work as a voice actor, you're working with a post-production supervisor or um, not, or a loop group director. But in this case, as was the case with Bumblebee, it was the main director of the picture. So all the care and love was there. And you oh, nice. Wonderful collaborator. We could work on things and change things and, you know, we'll do whatever was needed. We also often had two or three writers there, too. And that was fantastic because if we needed to change anything, they were right there ready to go. That is that's cool. Now, is that something that's kind of unique to this project that you've noticed or is that something that you've experienced before? They were definitely ready to make changes more than other projects I've, I've been in because they it was it was kind of alive and fluid. Because if it made sense when we were performing it, great. If it didn't, they could make an instant change. And that was fantastic. You know, they not only had the authority, but they had all the people there that were the people that have to do the writing. The director would do some writing. The the writers would do some writing. Um, and we'd try things out. Yeah, so, just trial and error. Just, just, just collaborate and try to get it as good as possible. Yeah. The changes that you've noticed, like just from performing, the changes that they've had to go through, is this like more extensive than usual or is it about average is what you would know it's, it's an organic thing when we nice. did Bumblebee, the scene in the forest was the very first scene of the movie after the credits originally and then they added the other scenes later maybe maybe the little army scene was happening but the stuff that was happening on cybertron it was cybertron right the beginning of the movie there in, in bumblebee um is that where they were that's where they were right I'm mm -hmm. yes 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 <laughs> you're good that was because the director really loved um, Transformers and he wanted to do something for the fans. And it was a great little backstory there and, and it was wonderful. But yeah, you you also have to realize when you're doing these things that it's an IMAX screen, bigger than life. You can never be that big. So they help you technically, but you just you just as big as you can get. You know, with, with, with Bumblebee, there was that one initial line that Blitzwing had, did you think you could hide? We did that in one session. We did it maybe 20 times, and then I had to go home. It was that intense. Yeah. You, 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 had to, you had to really get that emotional vendetta in your mind and just like really bring that and, and, and deliver it. And we talked about that at TFCon, too. That was, that's interesting. You tend to do what has to be done to make it great. Yes, absolutely. Cool, cool, cool. Well, yeah, and well, in Rise of the Beasts, you're voicing Rhinox and Battle Trap. Now, interestingly, these you're playing both an antagonist and a protagonist. Was that particularly difficult to achieve, or was it easier to balance given the fact that these characters might both have like a like equal intimidation and aggressive personalities? I'm pretty good at switching it up. If there's a new scene, I just jump into the new skin of the new character and, and roll, you know? Uh, you have to just do what my, my teacher, Sanford Meisner, said, live truthfully under given imaginary circumstances. So they throw a new circumstance at you. Um, they throw a new guy at you, and you just try to be him. You so you can just... Oh, that we're sitting there doing a couple of characters at the same time sometimes. Yeah. Do one character, then switch to the other one sometimes. But you can't feel like that. It has to feel completely locked in. And and from our from our conversation at TFCon, you you know you mentioned about adding your own personal story to Blitzwing's character in Bumblebee that wasn't related to the movie itself in order to like develop a certain vocal strength and style in your mind. 
Did you have to do that and replicate that strategy for Rhinox and Battle Trap? What kind of strategies did you implement? I try to do that with every part, you know, and, and just find what was going on. If the writing is vague or if it's just, um, well, same thing, vague. Um, not that it's bad writing, but it might not be specifically talking about a reason for them being that way. I have to make one up. There were similar situations in, in both movies, but they, it's all good. It's just part of the process. Yeah. What what kind of strategies would you say that you implemented for either one of these? Definitely personalizing their relationship, um, having a reason for him to talk to this one person in the way that he does, whatever, as, a, as aggressive as he might be, or if he's having a discussion that's more gentle, you have to have a reason for it. You can't just say words. You can't just be blustery. You have to be in a relationship. You have to Very be nice. The person, I say person, you know, it could be any sort of creature, maximal, a Predacon, anyone. Um, what that person, I say person, on your, on the screen there with you uh, means to you and reflect that in the performance. Very cool. Very cool. What was it like working among the cast, you know, the, the other voice actors in the room? Um, is 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 this like a like a group session where you guys were all collectively do your roles together or are they recorded separately? All by myself. All by yourself. <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes that helps with, you know, getting in a zone. So well, if there were other actors that had already done their part, I could react off of them. Sometimes they would have something called a scratch where it was a temporary voice. And I would react off of that uh, and just change it in my mind to be the real thing. Very cool. How how long did it take you to, from the start of doing your roles to the very end? Like roughly, how long did that process take? Rise of the Beasts. I began recording that in January of 22. And okay. No. Wow. Uh, the other film, I think, took about two years. And just on and off. You're not in every day or anything, but just every once in a while, they'll, they'll pull you in. Because they change the writing. They, they make decisions to flesh out certain scenes or pull back certain scenes and then they, they they need you to come back and make those changes with them because so what they do is they have screenings they have screenings internally they might have uh, focus groups and they they see how things hit and then they have to make their changes to make it exciting all the way through if that makes sense and also to make sense you know if it's something that doesn't make sense to an audience um they'll make adjustments so they're always monitoring where they're at with the picture very nice well, that's good that they're that they're able to like be dynamic and kind of, you know, make adjustments when needed and bring you in. Yeah, absolutely have to. A voice is the easiest thing to adjust. Right, you can just re yeah reperform it instead of, you know, in person shooting is a little bit different. If you want um, your CGI changed in two days, it doesn't always happen. No, not at all, not at all. So how so when did you learn um, that you? was going to be joining this project. What was that experience like? How did you get in connected with, with uh, Stephen and all of the others? I auditioned like anybody else. Uh, my agency is CESD in Los Angeles, and they're very well connected with Paramount. And we often get great opportunities at Paramount. So um, I just auditioned with everybody else. They chose me. Very cool. Well, uh, Ryan Knox and Battle Trap, we've gotten, thankfully, we've gotten to see a little bit more of them in the trailer. We got to see a couple of shots in the teaser, the initial teaser, and we got the the official images and all of that good stuff. Um, we haven't yet gotten their voices, but we are going to hopefully soon. Uh, hopefully in the be on, on June, is it 9th? June 9th. Yeah. It probably will be because that, that seems like it. that's the biggest trailer that they're going to drop for this. And, you know, given the proximity we are. We don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. They can do anything, like you said. It surprised me uh, with some of the, the stuff that they have not revealed. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Well, they reveal everything. They want to keep it exciting. That's good. That's good. Yeah, people are online. They're saying, oh, my God, they revealed Unicron. That's like the biggest da, 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 da. But I think, I'm just, I don't I'm know. This. this is not a spoiler. I said this at a convention. I have seen the final scene of the movie. You will, your jaw will be on the floor at how exciting it is. Like, I was. Yeah. I was there seeing it. So <laughs> it's pretty exciting. <laughs> That's so good to know that it's not the, you know, that, that he didn't just throw everything out there. You know, it's, no, it's, it's, a, it's going to be three movies. I don't know if you knew that. I, yes. It's, a, that was one of my questions. Movie one. And anything could happen in the next two movies. Oh, and my goodness. But I continue on with it. We'll see. Oh, my goodness. If they want me. If they want you. 
Um, Rhinox and Battle Trap are two very aggressive characters, as most of the robot cast that we have in this movie. So um, if you had to relate both of these characters to any other Transformer that we've seen in the past without spoiling anything, who would you relate them to? Battle Trap? You mean they're connected to another one I've done in the past, you're saying? Any Transformer. Transformer. Um, Again, revealing stuff, but we know, know. Battle Trap is a terror con, so you get the idea, right? Terror con. There's a lot of brutality there. Mm-hmm. So just any angry, brutal character you could imagine. But you know, I, I want to say a lot more, but I just don't want to. Yep, yep, but, yep. I'm trying to keep it within that perimeter as well, obviously. For you know, I tell you so much, but I, I just can't quite now. You know, I did some work for Marvel. You know, I, I was Drax and Guardians of the Galaxy animated series, and and I spoke with one of their executives at one point during the production, and he said, David, Marvel is in the excitement business, and it's the same thing with Paramount. They're in the excitement business and they will release things as they want. I'm a guest in their house. I have to wipe my feet when I walk in the door, so to speak. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's that's what my goal is to get, you know, get some questions around the spoilers and not actually getting to those because that's something we don't want to touch, definitely. And you know, even like outside of the rules, you know, the fans want to be preserved as well. You know, I, I don't want to know. <laughs> People crave spoilers, and I never really understood it. It's like, yay, you get to find out what's in the movie, and now the movie's not as much fun. You want the movie to be exciting. It's it's not going to be exciting if you know everything about it. You don't want to ruin the surprise at all. Now, I know that including, you know, Beast Wars characters into live action has been pretty exciting for a lot of fans of the original show. However, the storyline that this movie is based off of may not be fully aligned with that of the cartoon. You know, obviously being set in the 90s and, you know, as opposed to ancient times, as someone who has worked on the Beast Wars show yourself as Dev Charge and Teletrain 1, what can you tell Beast Wars fans that may be watching of what to expect from the Maximals and Terracons in the movies? Obviously, without spoiling anything. Uh, as the only person that I'm aware of in this movie who was in the original Beast Wars TV series, I know I had a good time making it. And I know if we're having, see, as a general principle when you're acting too and when you're making anything, if we're having a good time making it, you will have a good time watching it. Because absolutely made with fun and love and that's definitely what we did with this movie have you crossed paths with uh peter cullen while you were working uh, doing any uh, voice acting absolutely um not only working with him in transformers prime but i've been in, uh, in my conventions uh we got to have dinner about a year ago and yeah he's an awesome guy he really really loves the franchise it's it's really important to him and what about for the like for the Rise of the Beast production? Have you crossed paths with him for that? For not, not since we've started production, I haven't. Well, I, no, I did. I did see him at that dinner. It was at a fan convention in the middle of twenty two. So nice. Each other then. We do mostly record. We were mostly recording at Paramount uh, on the on the studio lot. Didn't run into him. They just scheduled them at different times. That's all. So okay. So what what can you tell us about Rise of the Beasts? What 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 can you tell us about realities? You know, like what, from what I've said, you know, it's it's exciting. It's fun. It's everything that you've seen. Um, I think it's a great ride. I haven't seen the whole film myself. I've seen pieces. You know, I've seen the scenes that I've worked on and a few other scenes, and um, I've never been let down by anything I've seen. I will tell you something very cute. Here's a cute little story. There were times when during the production, the animation wasn't finished. You know, we were doing the voice and they were finishing the animation, you know, months ago or year, even a year ago. And Steven, the director, he would create um, kind of like a storyboard, but he would do it with Transformers toys and he would shoot it himself and show what the action was going to be. And that was in as a placeholder while we were working sometimes. And I just thought that was super adorable and awesome. Yeah. Tells you how much he cares. Yeah, yeah. And there's a few that have had stories about, you know, working with Stephen Capel and and it very similar to that as well, like, you know, behind the scenes. How is it like working with him directly, you know, behind the scenes? And There's one thing that really sums it up. Um, one of my last days working, he just suddenly opened the door. Like, usually they're behind glass, right? They're in a studio setting and it has to be soundproof. He just opened the door and looked at me and said, David, I appreciate you. And that meant the world to me just to personalize it you know he's just not getting a picture in the can he's actually engaging with the actors and he wants to be good and he appreciates what we do and that's awesome and he's a good guy yes that's really awesome that's really awesome and um this is your first time working with steven cable jr for any project correct yes 
Very cool. Very cool. Um, have you gotten a chance to hang out with Anthony Ramos or any of the other cast members that are on screen? I haven't, but Anthony said something interesting in an interview. Um, he said that he really liked Depth Charge. Uh, that was his favorite thing when he was younger. So I, if he ever wants to get me a depth charge to sign for him, I will sign it for him. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he, he, he did say that. So maybe uh, maybe you can sign something for him. Yeah, I see you got Ryan Knox in the back. Ryan Knox is looking good. Yep. Um, and I've got my Grodd and my Shockwave. Yep. This isn't a Transformers thing, but this was a present from The Flash when they wrapped. And this was from the first season of The Flash. This was uh, actually on Grodd's cage from the set, which was very sweet of them to do. Nice. You got to get Battle Trap. You got to get Studio Series Battle Trap. Come on. I have him. I have him. You oh, know, you have him? Camera, yeah. I've got him in the box, in Studio Series, and I have him outside of the box to play, too. Very cool. As long as you got a version of yourself in Battle Trap. Very nice. Um, well, yeah, I mean, this is a this is this film's taking a very bold step. You know, we're introducing Unicron. Unicron has arrived, and, and that's that's a huge leap forward. Yeah, I was like, oh, finally we can like say that he's there. <laughs> I found the Unicron presence in the movie to be thrilling, actually. Really exciting. It adds a whole new dynamic. I mean, he's yeah. been around before, of course, but just the combination of characters, I will say this, the combination of characters that they have in this particular version is really, it's almost like, you know, when you cast something live action, the casting director has to make sure that all the characters work in really great synergy. The All the Transformers characters work in great synergy in this movie. And they, it really feels like a team. Just all the bad guys, the good guys, everybody. Yeah, it does. Unicron is exciting. You will love Unicron. Man, I, I was like, I, I was, I was, I was losing it. It was, it was, it was awesome. And I do see that, like with the Maximals, you can see that the Maximals and Autobots at at one point are at odds. You know, they're kind. They have to. There, there's there's some tension between the two, and then they eventually come together because of the fact that Unicron is awakening and whatever else, whatever other threat is is looming that we don't know about. I want to mention something. You know, like I, I was like, oh, is it really Cybertron at the beginning of Blitzwing? Well, I know it's Cybertron, but the thing is, what happens with me as the actor, I don't absorb all the details of the plot sometimes. I'm so focused on the relationship with the characters and what my character is doing that it just, it hasn't, after all these years, even sometimes it hasn't completely sunk in all the plot details. So I apologize for that. And always ask a writer if you're going to get into real plot things. Because uh, they're the ones that can really speak to it better than I ever could as an actor. I am really would really be thrilled to continue on, and we'll, I can't really say much about what happens to my characters in in this particular picture, but I guess we'll find out. And we'll, we'll find out. Is there any possibility of me carrying on? Hopefully, hopefully so. I hope that only the bad guys are punished, and hopefully not forever. You know, hopefully only temporarily. We have to have our bad guys. I was- <laughs> Disappointed that Blitzwing uh, died quite as quickly as he did, but it was a great scene back in Bumblebee. That was so exciting to be at the beginning of the movie, and and as a bad guy to be able to be responsible for ripping Bumblebee's throat out, as mean as that is, it is memorable. That's it makes it easier for people to remember what character I played too, which is fun. Very nice. So, is there anything that that you'd like to share with us about? your role working on the movie or any behind the scenes, any funny stories behind the scenes you want to share with us? You know, they were, they were talking about rewrites, you know, and things that change. Uh, we were doing really on the fly rewrites with the writers there. And the way we did them sometimes was so, so wonderfully fun. Uh, they didn't have time to go print it. There was no printer there. I mean, they would have to go back to the office to print the thing and we wanted to keep going. So a couple of times, he would hold up his laptop for me to, to read off of when he would make changes. Or I took a picture of the section of the script that changed. I would do that. Or sometimes what I do. Oh yeah. One time I had to, it was like really complex. So I had to take a picture of the screen of his laptop and then take a big clip and take my phone and put it up on the clip so I could see the changes. So Hollywood is not always as glamorous as you think it is. Right. Got to get done, you know? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta cut corners sometime just, just for the sake of getting it done. But so, so it was it wasn't difficult for you to, to switch between the, the the two characters? It, it, it was just natural. Well, we spent most mostly we would stay on the one character until we were done with it. You know, the line changes were whipping back and forth between characters, so we would sometimes have more than one character in one day, but we would switch. 
So like when you hear, so are you reading the other characters' lines or are you listening to their actual voices while you're doing it? I'm seeing it on the screen for the most part. Oh, cool, cool. I already recorded it. I'm seeing whatever they've, like sometimes the, at the very beginning, of course, there was very little animation at all. It was very rough and that got better and better and better as I, I was there. But almost all of it is seeing what's going on on the screen and jumping in where your character is and just uh, voicing on top of it. They put you in what's called an ADR stage. So that means automated dialogue replacement. And you have an enormous screen. There was one, there's one main ADR stage at Paramount on the lot that the screen is, seems to be, it can't be, but it, feel, it feels almost as big as an IMAX screen. You feel the huge, big impact of a major motion picture right in front of you while you're performing it. That helps you make the performance bigger. Wow, that is incredible. Having that huge, huge screen in front of you, it makes you want to go bigger. Well, yeah. Um, anything about the anything that's non non spoiler about the film that you're able to tell oh, fans? It's going to be exciting, and I think it's going to be fun. And I'm excited that it's three films, and I'm excited that it's Beast Wars. You know, that's really close to my heart, having done that in the 90s. And it, never in my wildest dreams did I expect to be able to do all these characters, let alone more than one. So I am very lucky and very, very feel very fortunate. Yes, well, we're definitely excited to, to, to see you perform and see what you have in store for us. And um, I, I know that the experience probably was a little bit different, you know, given that the story is different, but... The essence, I think, and the aesthetic of the Beast Wars characters were there. So ideally, you probably had a great time, I assume. Yeah, absolutely. All right, great. Find um, Mr. David Sobolov on Twitter, Vobolos and uh, Sobolov.com. Thank you so much for being here. And you guys can catch his performance as Battle Trap in Transformers Rise of the Beasts and Rhinox. Transformers Rise of the Beasts hits theaters June 9th, 2023. Thank you all for watching. Till all are one, good night. Bye. <laughs>